Hello, puppets. Hey, guys, it's Lee Ehrenberg. Yeah, from Pirates, from Once Upon a Time, from even Seinfeld. And you're watching Kendall Talks TV. We know you're here, puppet. Come out. And we promise we won't hurt you. What's up, guys? It's your host, Kendall Tucker, man, with Kendall Talks TV. And today we got a special guest I think you all have seen on the big screen more than once. He played as a character, Pintel, in the hit movie series Pirates of the Caribbean. He also had a reoccurring role as Grumpy on the hit TV series Once Upon a Time. You've seen him on Seinfeld, Friends, Star Trek, and much more. Today we got Lee Ehrenberg with us. How you doing, brother? What's up, brother? How are you? Thanks for inviting me, man. Uh, I'm excited to be here on Toxie TV with my man, Kendall. Definitely, man. I appreciate you sitting down with me, man. You being, you staying safe during this whole craziness? Yeah, I mean, that's really the only choice we have. You know, it's kind of like stay home, take care. I mean, I'm thinking about when I, this first went down because you know, I'm in California, so we've been kind of, I'm, I'm going on a month already of kind of being at home. And, yeah. uh, but it, what really hit me was when someone said, you know, imagine that you have it and you don't know it. Mm. And so then I'm now I'm treating everyone like I'm the guy. Yeah. And then that sets up a respect mm. when I go to the store, I'm, you know, or I'm doing the modern dance now. And I find it real interesting. Uh, we get a chance to do these. I'm home. I'm available. I get to connect with people. Um, I sort of am going with four M's, brother. Meditation, movement, mastery. So I might learn to cook a new dish, or I might be do a bad painting, or I might do an interview with someone on the, you know, on Skype, right? And then the fourth one is meaningful conversation. So just don't don't talk a lot of empty words. Find ways to like laugh with an old friend, or uh, you know, connect with your spouse, you know, yeah. or your, your kid, maybe even your kid. Challenging. So anyway, man, making lemonade out of all the lemons. That's my That's goal. That's good. That's good. That's great advice, man. And uh, Thanks, definitely stay positive. You know, stay positive. So always, That's key. always. But that's yeah. the key to life. You want to, you know, people go like, I mean, how do you make it in Hollywood or become an actor or follow a kid dream? Stay mm -hmm. positive and believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, then no one believes in you. You're the man. first one. Yeah. You're the first right. one. And then when they call your bluff, that's when talent and technique and training come in, right? They always say, um, I'm like, oh, you know, when technique, like learning how to do something is for when your muse fails you, when you mm. don't have the inspiration and you got to pound it out. We call it on, in theater, we call it phoning it in. Like you just don't have the same energy, but that audience paid and you, you've got to come find a way. And that's technique. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So let's let's jump into where where you got your start. Um, you got started doing theater. Um, yeah. When yeah. did when did acting become something you knew you wanted to do for a living? Maybe like uh, a little, maybe 11. Mm. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, I'll. I mean, I didn't do any, I wasn't a, I wasn't a child actor, right? So, um, and my, I knew my parents, like, you're going to college. So I was going to, you know, I started thinking of theater school and I grew up in Santa Monica, California. So just yeah. outside of like, you know, I mean, outside of LA, right next to LA, part of LA, basically, you all know Santa Monica. And um, so it's like, I was already around it, but I might as well have been from Florida, bro, because it. The, the, even to get across the street, to get welcomed into the studio, to get that first break, um, you've got to earn it. It's a million miles even if you grow up across the street from the studio. Wow. wow. Right? Listen, yeah. you're lucky or you're born into it. Uh, my family wasn't in the biz. Family nepotism gets a lot of people in their start. But anyway, uh, my classmates, like in high school, great. Like, I mean, a real theater lineage, a lot of movie star parents. So my classmates were like Emilio Estevez, Sean Penn, yeah. Rob Lowe was there, right? So that was, but I I just wanted it bad. Robert Downey Jr. too, right? Yeah, Robert's a few years younger. He was in theater with me too, yeah, Robert. I mean, so many though, like from Samo High. We were legendary theater, you know, and movie star kids, but 
that turned in. I mean, Charlie Sheen, obviously after Emilio, years with my sister's class. So, but that just made me want it more because like I could see all these dudes, like, you know, they had the family connection and I really had the whole, I was, you know, starstruck, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, it's a pretty, like there's something seductive about being on the, the movies, you know, it's fun. <laughs> I mean, still, I, didn't, I mean, as I learned, that was a youthful kind of, yeah. that's a youthful kind of uh, enthusiasm I'm describing. Obviously, I went to theater school at UCLA. I learned the history of the art, the art of communication, the art of storytelling, its importance in society, how it used to be part of, you know, it's, it was a sacred experience in ancient days, mm. the telling of stories. And so there's a responsibility that comes with being an actor, too, to... Uh, yeah to deliver the deliver in a way that's going to entertain and that the audience is the boss. You're there to entertain, feed the, feed the troops, as my buddies used to say. I, I hear you, man. So speaking of entertaining, um, let's talk about some of the shows and movies you've been part of. Right. Uh, let's start with the very beginning. Let's start with the audition process. For the most part, when you audition for a role in a movie or a show, is every audition pretty much the same? Tell us about that. Like, is I mean, it the same kind of process? You walk in, you read a script? I mean, basically, now a lot of them are self-tapes where you shoot them, like, on the iPhone at home or whatever and then send oh, it really? in. That's how it's moving now. So, I mean, in a way, we've been doing prepping for a kind of, you know, like, we do a lot of driving around to hit auditions, but if you can just do it on your phone. Uh, yeah, that's nice. Uh, it is and it isn't, you know. I personally you, like get that, you don't get that person. personal... You can't I sell want to see them too. I want to look at the director myself. Yeah. It's, I live in a two-way street, bro. I live on a two-way street, right? So to game, I give my respect to get my respect, but I need to get mine too, to really get, like, I feel comfortable as an artist. And that's why, you know, the bond between, say, casting directors and actors is real strong because uh, without the casting director, the actor never gets that. Somebody's got to take a chance on you. And that's the big part of the audition process, right? Um, yeah, but you're basically just, they send it to you, you read it, you make some choices, and then you go in the room and uh, try and execute. So they you know? send it to you ahead of time. You don't get it when you get there? Sometimes you do. That's called a cold reading when you get it at the last minute. And you got to be, that's a whole skill that's separate from the audition. It's like a subset of the audition process. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty fast on my feet, so I don't mind a cold reading. Uh, but on a standard audition, you'd at least get it the night before. And you know, you're gonna, you have to learn. What's up? I bet the cold reading really will stump some people. I mean, it can. It's not really fair to like, I mean, there's a fair amount of actors, believe it or not, or not even believe it or not, but whatever the percentage would be that would have a dyslexia. Yeah. Or, yeah, right. So they're at a little bit of a disadvantage, but when they get home to take their time and have proper preparation. I um, mean, that's not something they're going to want to say. It's embarrassing, you know, potentially. Uh, maybe it's not as stigmatized now, but I mean, I, I think it is, could, could be. But you know what, in the professional acting thing, uh, it's, a, it's a cutthroat business, bro. <laughs> you know, like, so I would never, I don't personally don't roll like that, uh, but there's some cutthroat stuff. You know, people want the parts, depending on the part. Yeah. Yeah, I, I believe you. I, um, you know, something I didn't realize until I did my homework is um, you don't really hear about this movie too much anymore, but you played in it, and it was one of my favorite movies as a kid, and that was, can you guess it? No. It was Warriors of Virtue. Oh, Warriors of Virtue. Nice one, dude. Yeah, I love that. I loved that movie when I was younger, and uh, what was your role in that movie? I played a character called Mantos. And I was one of the bad guys. So I was on the bad guys team. But the thing about Warriors of Virtue, for those that don't know, it was uh, we filmed it in China. Wow. In, Beijing, cool. in 1990, like five or six, maybe. Like at a time when not a lot of, uh, there weren't a lot of like what they call meguos, the white people, like in China. Not a lot. So it was real. And, and a great part of the acting life is the travel. So mm -hmm. that was a real, that was a travel experience. So how my life to work that? in China. What's that, bud? How'd you get that role? Did they cast you in LA and then you Yeah, casting casting in LA, met the director. Uh the director is a legendary Hong Kong director, Ronnie Yu. 
He also di directed in Hollywood some movies like Bride of Chucky 3. He did Bride of Chucky, so like Chucky oh. 3. Um, but a lot of famous Hong Kong movies from Hong Kong, which is a great cinema thing. And then the, the cinematographer was Peter Powell, who was a cinematographer for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Oh, wow. For a lot of, for a lot of the John Woo movies. Oh, that's cool. So my stunt guys were all badass Hong Kong stunters, and it was a lot of stunty stuff in that one, a lot of wire work, uh, kung fu kind of uh, weapons and fighting, and uh, yeah, it was fun, fun movie. Yeah, that was a good movie, man. I enjoyed it. Thanks, um, dude. That, you yeah, pulled that, that one. I'm impressed. I, yeah. I don't get the Warriors of Virtue too often. Yeah, I know. You know I, I did my homework, and I watched some um, interviews on you earlier, and I was like, not one person has mentioned this Warriors of Virtue, and that was a great movie. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah really, that was a that was a that was a mind-altering experience living in China for I want to say we were there for three four months, man. That's all. Awesome. Back in the day, yeah, it's rad. Yeah, I, I got some stories. I got some stories on that one, bro. God, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. really great, great people. But but it, you could go. I would go places. Um, just outside of, we were around, our hotel was sort of near where the, at the time, all the embassies are, still is. Mm -hmm. And so within that area, there's a lot of foreigners, people that were there, either breweries, car companies were there. It was starting, they were starting to uh, change the economic policy. So the cities could operate one way. It's interesting. I mean, it's China. It's very, I could go on the yeah. politics about it. But um, it was, uh, the making of the movie was rad. And this Beijing film studio, uh, yeah, good one, dude. I'm glad you I'm glad you mentioned that one. Yeah, I watched some behind the scenes footage on it, and it looked like it was really an awesome setup, an awesome studio, awesome, you know, everything. I mean, it was the big, like it was like the Universal Studios of Beijing. Yeah. So I don't know if people know the Chinese cinema, but there were there were a couple films. Uh, there was one called Raise the Red Lantern, very mm -hmm. famous Chinese movie of the early '90s. Gong Li, this famous actress. Uh, Anyway, it was it, for me as a student of the cinema and of storytelling and of Hollywood and all that. It was neat to be make a movie there. Fun. Yeah, that is cool. 